Welcome back to Cooking with Ash. If you're new to my channel, I welcome you. Today I will be sharing this scrumptious recipe for some bygone curry with potato, chickpeas, and egg. This is so mouth-watering, you're gonna enjoy every single bite. To all my subscribers, I'm sending you my love, thanks, and gratitude. If you're new to the channel, please do not forget to hit that subscribe button. We will be pairing this delicious curry with some hot soda roti. So let's jump into this delicious recipe. Prepare our eggplant or bygone curry with potato, chickpeas and eggs. Yes, it's a, a mouthful, right guys? Um, these are the ingredients we will be using to prepare that. So I have here one can of chickpeas um, I'm going to be using some of this coconut milk, not the whole can. I have here some celery, cilantro, of course, onion, shallot, shallot or scallion, some curry leaves, where we're pepper. You can use any spicy pepper of your choice. You can eliminate it. Um, you know, whatever you have on hand, feel free to use that. I have here my green seasoning blend, some turmeric curry powder, garam masala, and all-purpose seasoning. And this is our eggplant. I went ahead and chop up our eggplants with our potato already. This is the eggplant and potato chopped up nicely here. And if you cook eggplant, you would know that when you cut up eggplant or potato, um, if you're not cooking it like right off the bat, you have to keep it in some water or the color change. This is the eggplant I'm using. These are the Chinese eggplant. I love these, these are so sweet. I don't take the skin off because they're so young and fresh. I cook it with the skin off. So I kept one so you guys can have an idea, you know, of which one I use. So I am going to go ahead and we're gonna start to bunche our masala or bunjal or masala and start preparing this delicious curry. Yes, I will be using some egg in this curry. You know, sometimes you don't feel like eating meat or any sort of fish or shrimp in your curry. This is a perfect alternative. I'm gonna use some eggs. So I went ahead and put about six eggs to boil. When this finish, we're gonna peel it and we're gonna fry these eggs up. So I'll show you that. Here I have my oil heating up and it's about three tablespoons. You can put how much oil you, you like, you know, you can use more or less depending on your preference. I am going to go ahead and add all our aromatics that I had chopped up on the board. I'm gonna add it here. And we're gonna start to, you know, build flavors, sweat this down, saute it a little bit. And another thing I usually um, add here is a little bit of whole jeera or whole cumin. This is optional, you don't have to add that, but I usually add it here. So I am going to go ahead and add the cumin, the whole cumin directly. To our aromatics, now that everything is nice and sweat down and flavorful, we're gonna add our green seasoning, our curry powder, garam masala, turmeric, and all-purpose seasoning gonna mix this in well we're starting to you know bunje or bunjal our masala you want to mix this in well and we're gonna add some water to start this process I usually add salt here now salt to taste and later on you know when the curry is almost finished I usually you know taste it to make sure the salt content is good I like to bunjal the salt with the masala. So we're gonna let this fry up a little bit in the oil before we add the water to further bunjal this. Everything is nice and toasty, about a minute or so. I'm gonna go in and add water to bunjal this masala. Basically to cook this masala, cook the rawness out of the masala. So mix this in well. I went in here with about two cups of water. I like to add good enough of water so this masala is bunjal and cook nicely. So I'm gonna pop a cover on this and we're gonna fry this masala, bunjal it until it come back to its original consistency before we add our eggplant and chana. So this is what our masala is looking like. As you can see, most of the water I add to it is evaporated and it comes down back to the original consistency. 
a great indication to know that your masala is when well cooked or bunjal is as you can see it's separating from the oil and that's a great indication so if you're new to this and you want to make sure that your masala is cooked properly you know that by the oil separation from the masala and when you put the, add the water and you cook it for about five five to six minutes it's gonna come back to this original consistency I'm gonna go ahead and add some tomato I'm using frozen garden tomato guys as I mentioned before I always cut my tomato up from my garden and freeze them so to this I am going to go ahead and add my potato my baigan and my chana yes clear deliciousness have you ever um, added chana to your baigan curry leave a comment below and let me know if you ever did and if you never did still leave a comment and let us know your thoughts on it so we're gonna start to bunjal this again yes a lot of bunjaling here building flavors for a few minutes I'm gonna pop a lid on this and I'm gonna let the um, baigan release its own juice and water and then I'm gonna add some coconut milk and we're gonna go from there so you want to give this a good mix and let everything is well incorporated into our masala pop a lid on this and let this baigan do its thing about four minutes later this is what our eggplant is looking like it start to release its own juice Look how beautiful that is cooking and it's looking but because I'm making it with um, soda roti you know you need some gravy to this so I am going to help this along by adding some coconut milk and a little bit of water do remember everything I'm using will be listed in the description box below for your convenience. Ooh, look at that. So you want to mix this in, pop your lid back on and let this, you know, boil. I don't like my eggplant whole pieces. I like it to be melted and nice. So we're going to cook this until we have nice, soft, potato chickpeas or chana and eggplant it's gonna take a few minutes so this is what our egg is looking like I boiled it now we're gonna go ahead and fry this up nice and crispy on the outside I boiled it and I peeled it so what I usually do I grab a fork and I pork, poke some holes into this egg all over like that and what this helps to prevent is when you add the oil I'm saying when you add the egg to the oil the egg don't explode and splatter up you know sometimes when you fry these boiled eggs you got to be very careful so they don't burst and splatter up well this prevents that from happening so you guys are gonna see I usually put my um, splash guard over it, although I still poke the holes in it. I still add my splash guard, you know, because you never know if this is still gonna explode. But this is one way of preventing that. So I'm gonna add some all-purpose seasoning. Of course, you wanna season the egg a little bit. And that's it, that's it. I'm just gonna add it to our oil that I have heating up, and I'm gonna show you guys. We have a runaway egg. <laughs> So here I have the pot that I boil the egg in. I'm gonna add, I have some oil inside. I'm gonna go ahead and add our eggs here, one at a time. And I usually, like I mentioned, although I poke the holes, I usually add my splash guard over in case anything still decided to, you know, explode. And I have electric stove, so I'm gonna drop the heat to six. I'm gonna give this a little bit to fry up on one side and I'm gonna come back and rotate it until it achieves that beautiful golden brown color. This is what our eggplant is looking like, our curry baigan. Everything is cooked beautiful here. The baigan, as you can see, it melts down nicely. Potato is nice and soft. Our chana is nice and soft. I just add a little bit more tomato to finish this up. Mm -mm 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 -mm. When I tell you this thing is tasting finger licking good, oh, 
it's to die for. And I am going to go ahead and add my eggs that I fry up. And this is what it's looking like, as you can see. We didn't have to run for cover or anything of the sort. Nobody explode, you know. And this is what it's looking like. So as soon as this boiled down a little bit, like about a, a minute or so more, more, and you can see it's so rich and creamy and nice, thick sauce. Oh my God, guys. Yes, as soon as this simmer down, like about a minute or so, I'm gonna add our finished um, fry, fry boiled egg to this. And, you know, just put some scallion on top and we're good to go. We're good to serve this up with our sada roti or, or, you know, you can do rice or you can do oil roti, whatever you like here. But I'm gonna plate it up. I have Atiana anxiously waiting there because she's a curry lover to do this sample for you guys. Here you have it guys, our finish vegan with potato and chana with some egg. Look at it, so, so thick and nice. And we're serving it up with some nice soda roti. I'll leave the link below for you guys for the soda roti recipe. But look who we have here, <laughs> Miss Atiana. Mom, you got my favorite egg. <laughs> she loved boiled egg guys she loved boiled egg so she's gonna go in for the taste test so any sort of curry this child enjoy mom why is it so creamy i could just lick the whole plate on how delicious it is <laughs> That's right guys, she said it correct. It's rich and creamy because of that delicious coconut milk. It's so, so flavorful. So I really hope you guys try this recipe and share it with your friends and family as it is so, so satisfying and delicious. Some rich and creamy bygone curry with egg. Look at that and I fry the egg nice and crisp outside with potato and chickpeas. The beautiful mouthful <laughs> so thank you guys so much for joining us but i now realize look at my um princess short my mom beautiful caring and smart oh so thank you guys so much for joining us sending you guys our love our thanks our gratitude enjoy this recipe with your friends and family bye for now you know the food is good when she's like digging in like that not even paying the camera no mind so see you guys enjoy